Welcome everybody to episode 21 of Tales from the Tackle Shop and this is going to be back to normality today. Hopefully I've checked, make sure there's, I've even been, been around the other car park and make sure there's no one sat there. Have you been in the front room to have a look? No, uh, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> that was not your yet. mistake. Not yet. Right, yeah, so last week was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be fair, I've had quite a lot of uh, sympathy from people, said that I took it quite well. Sympathy? Yeah. How? Well, they just thought I was being picked on. Do you know what I mean? What, your mum? No, it wasn't. <laughs> the people said you, you took it quite well. You did took it. You did take yeah. it very well. I thought it was yeah. it, it was fantastic fun, wasn't it? And those three are yeah. they're a scream, aren't they? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, thanks again to Steve, Abby and to Matt. That was good. Um, took quite a bit of organising. Did it? Oh, yeah, because that was a, mum, a month in the making. Really? Because the mole should have been here. Oh. Uh... Yeah. He's gone underground again. He bottled it. Yeah. yeah. But he has sent me a picture. I ain't not mention this. Have you not seen this today? No, no, no. Uh, I probably have <laughs> seen it. I've seen quite a few pictures. Have you seen that one? Yes, I have, yeah. <laughs> Should we put it on here? Yeah, why not? <laughs> yes, I've seen that one. We'll stick this up. This is funny. This is yeah. <laughs> I want that one. <laughs> you drawing a peg yesterday. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was... I want that one. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The mole sent me that earlier. That was funny. And yeah. I, I think... It's not him that does the pictures. It's it's the uh, Chris Daniels that does the pictures. Do I know him? No, he bottled it. He was meant to be coming on money with. Um, was he? Yeah. Bottle job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, it's good. And I suppose when they give it to us, we've got to take it as well. I haven't had any comeback from any of the um, Spurs fans. Well, you've silenced them, especially with the way Arsenal were performing at the minute. I think I've done them. You know. And I even went to Emirates yesterday. Did you? Yeah, watched Arsenal ladies play. Yeah. Who? Newcastle. No, no we're not in that high. We met uh, Tottenham Hotspur ladies. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> One nil. <laughs> One nil. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, there were 60,000 people there. 60,000. Yeah. That's mad, isn't it? Yeah. How good's that? Women's football, mate, it's brilliant. It's on, on the increase, isn't it? Yeah. On the rise, yeah. yeah. I'm uh, not being biased here, but they play Arsenal the ladies play such a lovely style. They, they create so little chances, but they absolutely dominate the opposition. Mm. But um, it's good. What, we were right up in the gods as well. It was really good. So that was cool. Cool, good stuff. Um, we've got lots of things to talk about match-wise. We've yeah. got a big section from Simon, which I'm yeah, conscious of. Yeah, really good, yeah. Don't want to not... I want to dive straight into it, but should we talk about the duck first? Yeah, if you like. Because this is cool, isn't it? Yeah. What, what did the guy call this? Well, we don't know, so there must table be... Table of relevance. Table of relevance, yeah. So this must be some sort of in-joke with maybe the, the Norfolk boys that fish all summer and all winter as well. So I'm not sure what this is all about, but... Do you want to read it out? Uh, yeah, so basically the letter says, um, fishes all the matches on the Bure and the Thurn through the summer, great bunch of guys and banter, which fishing, what it's all about. And it says, please give a big shout out to Tony Gibbons, who organises all of the comps with total perfection. In fact, all that help, they are fantastic. So that's from Aid Parrot. Um, so thanks for that, Aid. And obviously, I know Tony. He does a fantastic job, walks a billion miles every day up and down the river. Um, I'm sure he's going to be doing a bit of commercial fishing, but once June the 16th come, Tony's uh, everywhere, bless him. He does a fantastic job. And the matches that they run are so friendly. Everyone's sort of happy. You know, it's it's, it's great. It's a great, it's a great What's place to go What's the guy's name, fish. John? Uh, Aid. Aid Power. Aid Power, yeah. Well, Aid, can you let us know what the relevance of the duck yeah, is? Yeah, I'm sure that we might get some comments from other people. I don't well, we've know. We've missed Obviously, it, there's, yeah. yeah. It's so, probably obvious and we don't know what it is. No, no. Um, but this is so good. So thanks for that, yeah. The table of relevance. Yes. I think um, my new best mate. Michael Lodge. Oh, yeah. He's going to be sending something. Apparently. Yeah. It hasn't arrived We're yet. going to have, like... Well, we're going to have a... We're going to have a um, dinner table in here soon, Matt, the way this is going. Well, we haven't got many podcasts to go for the end of the season. No. And what we are going to do, what Alex is going to do, you're going to make uh, a bit of space, aren't you, in the shop? Yeah, some... Well, one day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. To put me on the spot. We'll have... We'll, we'll, we'll keep just, this. We'll do a ceiling. We've got a bit of space on <laughs> yeah. the ceiling, yeah. Do you remember a teacher called Nigel Denchfield? Name school. rings about science yeah. teacher. Yeah, yeah. Right, so in the staff room, he had his favourite mug. Yeah. And it used to go missing. 
Right. And he used to blame everybody. Yeah. Right. And I wish I used to nick it. Mm. Because what I wanted to do, and he said, I wanted to stick it to the ceiling above where the science time teacher, yeah, yeah. where all the science teachers sat in the staff room. That was one of my master plans. <laughs> I did want Steele, uh, oh, what is her name? She's, you, were you then sixth form? No, I didn't do so. I went she, straight into. She well, taught a lot of sixth form shot. stuff. I can't remember her name, I think of it in a minute. And she had oh, the old overhead projectors. Right. And she was really like precious about her overhead projector. And people would borrow it and not take it back to a classroom. Right. So she was in the staff room one day. I went, well, if anyone knows my overhead projector is, I didn't have it, but I sent her a, a ransom note. Mm -hmm. in her, it took me ages. I cut out all the letters out of a newspaper. Oh, I have your OHP. Mm -hmm. And I stuck it in her pigeonhole because we had trays. Mm -hmm. About a week later, she goes, I still haven't had my OHP, so I sent her a second one. Why? She didn't say a word to really? anybody. Really? And she had her leaving due, and I said, uh, Remember your OHP projector going and those ransom notes? She went, I said, that was me. Do you know what she said? I knew. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what? This didn't say anything. No. But when I think about Nigel, when you said cups on the yeah, ceiling, yeah. it wasn't Nigel. That's one yeah. of the things I wanted to do to him was get his cup and stick it on the ceiling so you'd see it sat there. No, no. I don't know why I went into that. Yeah. But I do like the banter. So, yeah. guys, this is brilliant. We'll, we'll call it the table of relevance yeah. or irrelevance. Yeah. Or whatever. Maybe, yeah. Alex is going to. Make space somewhere in the shop for season five and season yeah. six. We'll let it naturally develop. Yeah. We won't have a football theme unless it goes that way. And no, no. We'll see what happens. No. That was cool. Right. Um, should we get straight into Willsmore? I think so, yeah. This is long but awesome. Yeah. And so, I enjoyed listening to him and I think that a lot of people enjoy the different style to Italian match. Do you want to explain to everybody what it is? Well, we'll listen to him, shall we? Well, it's his exploits in Italy over the last yeah. few of two and how yeah. different it is. It, it is, yeah, and it's really interesting. So, um, gold, sure. gold dust, I think. It is, yeah. yeah. Enjoy this. So, finally, we've got Simon on the podcast. Someone make some noise in the background. Creaking. Creaking. Hey. The cameraman, as normal, always in the way. Nice guy on a diet. Normally, when I'm fishing, there's a boat in my peg or something like that, you know. I bet you didn't have that today, did you? Some bloke on a boat. I thought he'd turn up on a boat. Oh, well, yeah. I thought he was going to come like yeah. speeding down the middle of the, <laughs> yeah. the river on his... Well, uh... with, like this, with his Arsenal yeah. flag over the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did yeah. think that. I was looking I for imagine. him. I can imagine. Anyway, so thanks for coming on the podcast. You're welcome. We've thanks been for uh, trying to get you on for a while and finally we've arranged to uh, get it sorted and organised. Mm -hmm. Obviously, before you spoke about how you got into fishing and you're fishing in Italy and stuff like that. But what we really want to know is how the, what is the difference between fishing in Italy, international fishing, and fishing over here? Okay. For both team and individual. Yeah. Or is there any individual? There is, but it's very different. I can imagine. Yeah. There's, um, so really, so I fished in Italy when I was 20 till 26 years old. Right. Then I came back. So I've been back a fair few years. And two years ago, I sort of, well, I was actually going to do it a bit earlier than two years ago, but because of COVID, I couldn't. But I went to rejoin the team in Italy, although I do live here, obviously, and I've travelled across mm -hmm. and fished in the Italian team championships for the last two years. Is that two years you've been going there? Yeah, this is, so this will be my third year coming up. Right. So that was something I really always wanted to do. Never had the opportunity before, but thanks to Hydra, you know, I distribute the Hydra brand and they have their own team um, in the Italian championships. And they said, you, look, do you want to come back and fish? And I sort of literally just fly over Yeah. Um, on a Wednesday. It's have, pretty cushy to me. It's brilliant. Yeah, I just take uh, some rigs and hook lengths and, and some clothing and um, sort of fly to Milan, get picked up, and then we all head off to the venues and as it goes the whole team goes to practice for two days before the match so i just join the yeah. join the group and everybody's in digs in the hotel or whatever and, and a couple of days practice and then the matches and quite often there's two matches on a weekend right so it makes it are they four hour matches or? they're four hour matches international rules float i'm in the float the float thing is the biggest thing in italy right there is a, a sort of feeder Italian championships that runs along the same lines it's a lot smaller and the big difference one of the big differences is the commercial scene in Italy is really sort of just a fill-in thing to do you know it's like a low cost not much prize money right 
Complete opposite to here then. Complete opposite. It's only you do in the winter if you yeah, want to. There's, really? Yeah, there's not really, there's no team matches in the winter because it gets so cold. Obviously, it's very hot in the summer. So mm. all the, the official season is from April till October. Outside of that, you can, you don't have to even go fishing if you don't want to. There's oh. nothing. So, yeah, the, the commercial fishing is, there is a lot of commercials, but it's complete. There's not much prize money it, and it's just a sort of, something to do if you fancy doing it really mm -hmm. and there are people that just do that but the pools will be like a tenner right and they'll pay a fiver out and, and yeah. spread the money around yeah. you know it's literally a, a different ball game really mm. completely different isn't it yeah. yeah 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 for me it's like silverfish fishing or what we do here silverfish fishing in the winter more carp if you want to go down that route in in the summer or the river fest that sort of thing yeah individual competitions um it's not bad because you can have a bit of family time in the yeah. winter. You're not under pressure to go non-stop. Get your kit sorted. Yeah, you can just do other things if you want to, or you can find a match every Saturday and Sunday on Carp Lakes and, and do that. You know, it's up to you, but it is up to you. You're not, but the flip side is the, the Italian Championship, or the main, so if you want to be a good angler in Italy, mm -hmm. you need to do well in the Italian Championships, right. individual and team. Mm -hmm. Right, so that is... There's no fisher mania, obviously. Yeah. yeah. And really, there's no prize money right. in any of the competitions. So the team matches, the Italian, the, the Italian team championships, it really is all about the team and 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 winning as a team. Yeah. There's no individual payout. There's no. Well, put it this way: I came fourth individual in a match. I didn't even realise until I got home. You know, there's, yeah, yeah. there's absolutely nothing. Yeah. It doesn't it's come not, into it. Yeah, it's not highlighted. In no, way, it's all it? about your section points, doing your job for the team. I know that is how our team fishing is, but we do have individual prizes and yeah. prize money. So it, it, it makes it... Um, so they don't pay like every five pegs or anything? Nothing. 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 Mad, isn't it? There is, a little, there is an entry fee. A lot of it is administration. And there is some prize money... But it's minimal and what happens is because of the way the teams are run all the prize money goes back into the team yeah. to cover the costs because there's yeah. a lot of costs and, and a lot of the clubs or sponsors cover a lot of the costs so that money right. comes back in yeah into the pot if you like yeah what about the sponsorship side of things because over here every like every team's associated with a um, a, a brand or whatever is it as big out there as it yeah, is here bigger, probably, probably bigger. bigger is it yeah it's very yeah. strict if you're a two Bettini team, yeah. Every angler will have two Bettini poles, yeah, and and luggage, and yeah. you, you know you can't you can't use. What about other... in like the lower level side of things, or is it just bang? There's two two like divisions, or how does that work? Is it? Uh, there's sort of three. So the the Italian cha championships is split up into six divisions. So like. My Hydra team is in A1. Mm -hmm. It goes to A6. Right. But they're all on the same level, but they're nationwide. Yeah. And then so many teams from each league qualify for a final. Mm -hmm. But below that, there is provincial and regional yeah. divisions, which are local. Yeah, it's probably a bit more slack in the lower. Yeah. So would you say that's more like a club level? Is that how they uh, sort of, yeah, sort I of suppose, get uh, into that higher end and get yeah. noticed, is it? The, or? The, the regional matches will be... Closer to home, the level will be lower, a bit yeah. of a mixture, easier. And other teams, might well, sound silly, like, for example, Barnsley, a, a more northern team, but they're spread out, or, you know, like for the top Italian teams, are they local because more local to each other, or...? Um, what, the Anglers? Yeah, the Anglers, yeah, sorry. Not necessarily. So it's like, obviously... No, people travel... Dork in, in the past have had anglers from Bristol and here, there and everywhere. No, or I think a, a team in the north will have anglers from the north. Yeah. But they could be living sort of hours away from... Yeah, two, yeah. three hours. Yeah. yeah, but you have to travel a lot for the venues. Yeah. So I fly to Milan. It's usually at least a two-hour drive to where we're fishing in, yeah. in different places. So it's not really... It doesn't really matter, you know, where... Mm -hmm. But you you wouldn't live in the south of Italy and fish for a team in the north. No, That's just like no. too far away. No. So it's not like the power, the pulling power that the big teams have over here. It's like it's not. I well, suppose we're a smaller country. Yeah, though, Italy's a longer country. Yeah. It's a longer. But the top teams, the the whole job is really in the northern to middle part of Italy. Mm -hmm. There's less teams in the south. 
There's more teams in the north. Um, most of the tackle companies are based in the north. Are they? And the most of the matches are in the north. Yeah. So it is sort of, uh, if you live in the north of Italy, you could fish for any team in the north yeah. of Italy, yeah. really, because you're all going to the same venues mm -hmm. and they are spread about. So the venues are a bit different as well, aren't they? Yeah, the venues are actually a lot of canals. Why? And, and actually a lot of them look like Fenland drains. Really? Yeah, irrigation, sort of got flood banks. Yeah. Generally, they've got a flood bank which comes down to a bit of flat banking to fish off. Completely opposite to our ones. Yeah, 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 they're a bit more comfy. <laughs> <laughs> and they've all got a road behind them. Well, most of them have, to be honest, around here, haven't they? But yeah. they haven't got the flat bit at the bottom. That's the bit that they lack, I think. No, so there's, no, there's never any walking. The venues are generally comfortable. Um, so you can... They're basically like giant commercials then, aren't they, really, when you think about it. If you can park behind your peg, comfortable pegs, easy access. Lots of fish. Lots of fish. Yeah. That's probably one of the reasons why the carp side of things hasn't taken off. Yeah, it? they don't need to go to commercials. Exactly. They don't. The fishing, I think last year, in, in all the matches I fished, the lowest weight I had was eight pound. Really? Yeah. The biggest weight I had was 32 kilos. And that's in a natural was that, that, that waggler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was in the finals. Yeah. yeah, I looked epic. Yeah. See some pictures of that on your Facebook, and I thought, wow, they're in the venue anywhere over here where you can do no, that. Isn't no, it? no, I know people say this is the best venue in the world, and that's the best venue in the world, but there's some good places out there that yeah. people don't know about. Yeah. I can imagine. I can imagine. So, what is your team that you fish for then? So, it's Hydra, Sumazi. So Maisy is uh, the town where Hydra is based. So yeah. Hydra is a company, has this is the Hydra team. So mm -hmm. Hydra sponsor probably 20 teams in Italy, yeah. but this is the home, yeah. the company team. And yeah, you'll find yeah. that every company has sort of a, a home team, you could call Milo it. Milo have a home team, yeah. Colmick, Colmic, 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 where Falsini called. fishes yeah. in that Ultrano and yeah. Lenzo Emiliano for Tubertini where Gabba fishes and, yeah. and you find in those teams there's people that generally that work within the company. Yeah. So, you know, they've got anglers who are very good and they they work within yeah. the company and the whole thing, you know, they turn up in um vans with all the logos on yeah. and everything, you know what I mean? Yeah. Smart. Yeah. yeah, it's all teams of four. That's the other thing. Do you think our team fishing are too our big competitions are too big? I know it sounds silly. The only way maybe teams are going to compete with you, like so your Barnsleys and that, is to make the, instead of having teams of ten, have it teams of six. Do you yeah. think? Do you think that would? I think it's good. I think it would be good. Yeah. I think it could revitalise things in that there could be a lot of strong teams of four or five or six. Yeah. And also think for tackle companies, if they did want to sponsor a team, it's feasible. You it? can have a proper team of six people. You know, even a five are fishing and one reserve, and you rotate yeah. a little bit. But you, it wouldn't be out of question to be able to f sort of give an angler yeah. a pole and 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 fully fit out. So yeah, I think it's something worth considering, isn't it? Would it would it bring team fishing back? Well, the maybe? census challenge is teams of five. Yeah, and that's outside three teams, or whatever. It is. Outside of nationals and other things, that's. Just, the most popular match isn't it and it's easy to it's easier to manage five people and get organized yeah. and find five people that are all motivated the same way that want to yeah. practice that's, that's the problem with with such big teams isn't yeah. it you've got not everyone can do everything at once no it's expensive isn't it, it you is. know for a start and and uh, you can have so in the division i fish in there's 50 teams there's from our club there's three teams a b and c so you can have a maximum of three <coughs> um mm -hmm. You can have a maximum of three squads per club. Right. Okay. So we've got three, three teams of four, mm -hmm. plus a little bit of rotation, plus generally every angler will have a runner, mm -hmm. every single angler. So in in the in the digs, in even in the practice days, it can be like twenty people from our team. It's mad. Isn't it? It's great. Yeah. It is mad when when you think how many like you've obviously been like this year just gone international wise. How many of the how many Went as England, Team England. On the, on the yeah, yeah, with yeah. the support. Well, no, just as the team. I mean, yeah. that there's more than 10 of you, is there? No. Yeah, there's no. 20 just for one. Yeah. It's yeah. mad, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's because it's well financed. Yeah. To be honest, it doesn't cost, you know, it depends. If in Italy to do well, you have to, like I say, it's about section points, it's about consistency, it's about fishing for the team. Mm. 
And the better you do, you generally get into a better team. Yeah. There's quite a lot of turnover of anglers. They're a bit, if you do well over a period of time, you've got a good chance of getting up into yeah. a good team. And if the better the team, the more the team pays, basically, of your expenses. Mm -hmm. Flip side is, if you're in a good team and you have a couple of bad seasons, you can be replaced pretty rap quick. rapid. There's yeah. not much, you know. You know, take your foot off the pedal and you... Yeah, it is. It's, it's, there's a quite an investment by these tackle companies. You know, Hydra spend over 20 grand a year putting the teams out. Do they? Yeah, yeah. But they've got sponsors and external sponsors and they do some fundraising and, and you know, the Hydra, the company, put a lot of money into it. But if, it is a big advert for each brand. The team, the success, if your team's successful in Italy, Italian anglers like to, you know, if, if Colmic are winning everything, there's a lot of people buy Colmic if... You know, flips the same for yeah. Hydra, same for Tubertini, same for Milo. It really is a reflection, looked upon as a reflection of the company, the success of the team. Yeah. So it is a is a running advert, really. Whereas, I suppose, in this country, obviously there's some teams get some fantastic sponsorship, but really they're not, it's not like it used to. No one gets, no, do they? They don't get nothing for free. They don't get nothing free nowadays, pretty much, do they? No, I wouldn't. I don't know what other teams yeah. get particularly, but no. The, if the I way think, the companies sort of yeah, I think look here, at things totally different, don't they over here? Yeah, here it's a lot more about media. Yeah, Facebook videos. Yeah, you know your top anglers are very influential. Anglers that are fishing the big competitions. Yeah, winning big events consistently. You know, they're your professional anglers. That's mm. where all the sponsorship is is going really, and um, that's a reflection of the UK circuit yeah. whereas in italy they're not so hung up on social media they don't it's not so many videos coming out that sort of stuff doesn't carry so much weight as it does really? here people don't do a facebook report it's all more about black and white your points yeah what you've done Results. over a period of yeah. time they're sort of a bit more calm about the whole yeah. thing and and you sort of have to build your reputation through your results really through your actual fishing yeah, yeah. Than yeah. But a facebook. different type of results to here yeah you know, your consistency in your section. It's yeah. not about winning. That's, I think, I mean, I have people come in the shop and they're like, oh, you, you know, when you do well in some of the local opens and you frame or whatever, it's like, oh, you're doing really well. And it's like, sometimes you think, well, no, I've been doing pretty consistent every week, but it's just the fact I've drawn in a better section and yeah. it's highlighted that. Yeah. People don't sort of no. don't look. They don't look at a section and go, "Oh, he's done really well in there." They just look, "Oh, he won the match for twenty pounds, yeah. don't they?" It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely different attitude. Yeah, the way the venues are in Italy, like there's a lot, a lot of these matches, two hundred pegs. There'll be, well, I fished them where there's actually only two end pegs. Really? Yeah, two hundred in a line. And I think the most end pegs I've had in a match is four, where there's been a bridge in the middle of it, yeah. and there's no features that can count for anything there's no turning bays there's no interruptions in the pegging it's very sort of uniform mm. you know it's very it's not a case of oh you're on the chub bush and he's on the turning bay oh you're in section because you've got 12 yards more than the next bay. no it's not like yeah. that at all it's not like that at all it's very uniform the type of fishing is very samey in fact in the beginning i did sort of think oh, everybody's just fishing the same methods and every peg looks the same what how can it be any different yeah i said to bola benny i said what's the crack because we're all doing the same thing he said yeah whoever does it the best wins mm -hmm. and it's true it's the little details that and yeah. sort of that's how it should be really yeah. to a degree so they're fishing international style every time they go yeah so there's uh you have a your peg you fish between the numbers you can sit anywhere right you can um there's bait limits different bait limits depending on the venue sometimes jokers allowed sometimes it isn't mm -hmm. sometimes worms are only allowed on the hook really? not allowed like to that. feed I think, you know, they say it's a little bit for cost right but it's cost a fortune anyway so i'm yeah. not really sure about that um you know they literally yeah, it's, it's international rules so there's no more than 10 percent of your lead on the bottom uh some of them are pole only some of them are waggler only believe it or not so it's very, very structured. And like I said in the beginning, if you want to get to the top of match fishing in Italy, you have to compete in these matches, which are run by their federation. Mm -hmm. So it's quite a commitment. It's almost no alternative. Yeah. Whereas in this country, you've got, you can go down the individual route for Fishermania and maybe match this, mm -hmm. and, or in the feeder world you can. Yeah. 
in the silverfish world yeah. you can f1 you, so you it's a bit more open what you want to do yeah. in this country and there's an interesting you know there's a prize pot at the end or finals or there's something you can achieve that doesn't depend on anybody else mm. whereas in italy if you want to be do well do well and become a sort of well-known good angler you have to fish in these federation run matches mm, brilliant mm. so i love team fishing i've probably said it yeah. many times before it's if, if I didn't go team fishing, I'd probably, well, I wouldn't give up fishing, but I would never enjoy it as much as I do. If you love team fishing, you would love fishing in Italy. Yeah. You really would. Yeah. And I suppose the social side of things is brilliant as well, isn't it? Yeah, it obviously depends if you all get on or not. I'm lucky in Hydro, it's a really, they're really careful who they get involved mm. and everybody they are good friends and they've all fished together for years and it's yeah. been easy to for me to fit in, which is fortunate. Mm. Um, but yeah, you go away on a Wednesday or Thursday, you, you're practicing together, you stay in the digs, yeah. eat together, talk to, you know, we have proper meetings. And um, there's sort of a lot of, if, because everybody's fishing with the same tackle as well, there's quite a lot of, is, is, how can I put it? When you get on a method, everybody's on the method because everybody's using the same ground bait, yeah. the same floats, the same elastics, the same hooks. So it's very quick Stand and neat. Out. Yeah, it's like we all use the same stuff. So you can, if somebody twigs a method, everybody can get on it really quickly. Mm -hmm. So it's, it works well, Brilliant. to be honest. Brilliant. So do you want to go through some of the matches you fished this year? Because some of them Facebook posts I see looked pretty impressive. Yeah, like they are good venues. Oh, yeah. yeah, they are good venues. So the first one I fished was on a canal, Bianco, White Canal. Right. At a place called Adria, which is where they had the World Club feeder championships i think a couple of years ago and there's been a european championships on there right. as well so it's about i don't know how wide it is 80 meters at least wow. tidal Beast, then. It's, it's, tidal a big, as well. it's tidal goes both ways goes up and down and you say like march just twice three, yeah times yeah it's <laughs> not quite the same thing so um yeah so that that venue is you setting up on boulders it's really, it's not very, it's the most uncomfortable venue I've fished in Italy. And it's coloured water, it's tidal, it's quite near Venice. Right. So it's not far from the sea. It does get some salt water in yeah. it as well, depending on the tides. But what they try and do is um, sort of get the matches or the important matches when the tide is not too strong. Right. So when it's manageable, because yeah. it can rip. But when we fished it last year, um, it was pretty decent. It wasn't over the top. And it's very, a lot of fishing in Italy is for skimmers at right. times, but they're very fickle fish, especially when jokers are loud. And you have to be very careful what you do. If you get it right, it can be very easy. If you get it wrong, you can, you very wrong. You, you, can you can pay the price. And it's not easy. And things change from season to season. So this venue has predominantly skimmers at least before we went, and historically, it had been a lot of skimmer fishing, and probably not Hydra's strongest venue in terms of tactics. Hydra's, the Hydra team is very good at catching lots of little carp, carassio, yeah. but skimmers has always been a bit of a, you know, not so sure. But anyway, so we went along to the venue expecting it to be skimmers, and we practised. The way you practise is the Thursday is a free practice, so you can all get some pegs, mm -hmm. fish together. The, f the, f the next day, you're, you draw two pegs together mm -hmm. and two of you practice. So in every z there's zones, so you yeah. know what zone you're going in before the match, and then there'll be two of you together in each zone from... Each from, team? Yeah, each right. club. Yeah, so there's basically two of you. But you're in twos spread around all over the venue. So it sort of turned out on this match... So you have, like, each team gets a... The chance of yeah fishing. you're in instead of going the whole team in that that bit yeah so i'm in the it. i'm in the third zone but i could end up practicing the, in the third or the fourth zone because the angler is in the fourth zone for my team yeah practices yeah. with me so that so there's two of you in the c and d or three and four yeah. however you put it and two of you in a and b but yeah you, and then because you've got three teams there's more you know, you got you have anglers dotted about in that zone. Yeah, so there's more than there's more than uh, just the two of you in each zone. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that match we practiced the first day. So that that was this was the first trip last year, and the first day of practice, and I didn't catch a lot at all, and uh, it wasn't simple. I fed it wrong, and 
the thing is with these venues, they don't get fished much before the match, right. maybe a couple of weeks before, and they do change. So nobody's like 100% sure. Nobody's been there for like five weeks beforehand yeah. because because generally it's been cold and it's got warm or the venue hasn't switched on. And these venues switch on as the bait goes in. Right. So then the weekend before might not be relevant yeah. to the match because yeah. it hasn't had 200 people practicing mm. because everybody will be there. Quite practicing. often you read like, the international post where in practice teams have caught loads of like catfish and then all of a sudden they do they just gorge themselves and then just like that's the little out. catfish yeah yeah well in this venue catfish came into it right but channel catfish right which are proper oh, right. catfish right right so what happened there's a river near the canal which flooded right and fish moved from the river into the canal that wouldn't have normally been there mm -hmm. they, basically these catfish and mullet um mullet as, mullet as well sea fish yeah so when we practiced the first day, I didn't catch a lot, but a few people caught. And the second day, we went and practiced down the bottom of the match venue, and it was shallow close in. But what we heard was that there had been a, quite a lot of these catfish caught mm. close in. You sort of have a six-meter line just yeah. over the rocks, and then you fish 11 and a half. You don't fish 13 because it starts going, getting a bit too deep, and there's yeah, always the what, Yeah, and with the salt that can potentially come into the venue, you don't want to be in the deepest deepest bit so you fish tend to fish coming up up the shelf a little bit and uh so we had our meeting and uh so in this match bloodworm and joker was allowed right and so you probably know about pongo yeah that's real well you can explain it yeah so pongo so when you fish in italy for bream basically you'll have some ground bait and soil and some lean or soil on its own with more joker in it in your ground bait you have less hardly any bait really yeah. the ground bait's the attractor the soil or or lean with your joker in it and chop worm is your yeah food. so pongo was this thing that probably everybody knows about where you lock your bait into the lean by over wetting it or, yeah. and possibly adding gray lean yeah well and then you would throw in ground bait also quite rock hard well that's a sort of way of fishing for bream that's quite common in Italy and sort of, I think it originally came from Belgium. But in this case, that was it, the opposite. That You had to fish it the opposite of that. You had right. to put in, everything had to break up straight away very quickly, which when you look at the venue, it's it's ripping, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's rocky, it's coloured, it's big, it's windy, it's choppy. You wouldn't think feeding it soft would work would be the way but it's obviously moving fast on the surface and and a lot slower on the bottom and you've got to put it in the way the fish want it mm. so the tactics we came up with was to feed a, a, a salty black it's always black ground bait in italy jet black they even put black dye in the terre de riviere it's like they just want black. Like everything black so the key there really was to ball it in with about five liters of ground bait and soil 30 percent soil but literally just take the balls form them and throw them so they would go in with a little bit of a cloud they were going to the bottom but they were breaking immediately you know within a few minutes of yeah. hitting the bottom and then cupping in soil over the top the site with the same theory mm. really you know soil obviously breaks the ground out quite yeah now. tear the riviere a tiny bit of grey in it slightly over wetted and that had more joker in it and minced worms and that was actually you got a really good start if you did that so that's sort of how we fished and um and within the team there's there's certain people that you sort of listen to more than others mm -hmm. and one of the lads in the team he said look this six meter line we've got to feed it for catfish because these catfish are coming out we've got to feed for them somewhere there's not a lot of bream coming out short so there we fed sticky mag right ground bait with a lot of particles yeah. and sticky mag and fished with heavier gear and that sort of turned out good tactics really for me especially on the day um i caught nine kilo 600 so what sort of depth was it sorry? top fours top nice depth yeah nice, not too deep yeah, yeah 12 foot yeah so i fished um Bought it in, started fishing for skimmers, caught, actually caught two or three mullet, a little carp, some chunky skimmers, and then I switched to catfish short, cupping in sticky mag, and I caught some some decent catfish, and, and I ended up third in the section in that match. And, um, and the big sections, aren't they? Sections are 10. Oh, 10. 10, yeah, sections are 10. So that was a good, um, 
So I had a good match. The guy to me left caught a four kilo 500 carp right. and beat me by 500 grams. Yeah. And another angler further down the section caught 14 kilos, all catfish, the whole lot. Sure. He caught some short, some long, um, but he just didn't go down the joker route. He fed corn. Went for it. Ground bait with dead maggots, sticky mag, and just went, and, he, and, and it really paid off for him. Mm. He, he, he won the section. But these are the sort of, sort of floats we were using. So on, what line is on that then? So, so that's like a, a, like a direct mono -y feeder -y line. It's a, yeah, so it is, it's a waggler line. Yeah. So it's, you know, in the Thinking, simple, yeah. simpleton, you know, it's like a bit like Maxima. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not Maxima, but it's that type of line. Uh, just basically, so it's robust. Yeah. And uh, if you take the, the band off, you can see the shotting pattern if yeah. you want. Yeah, it's bad. It just oh, hooks yeah. over. Oh, it's that way around, Yeah, I always, I always put them on that way. Look at that. Yeah, so what, because the venue's tidal, you, sh you plumb up to the bottom shot. Yeah. And you'd have this much line plus a 25 centimetre hook length on the bottom. Yeah. Fish like 014 and a, and a big 16, like a feeder style hook. Yeah. What, uh, a 701 or something? 701. Yeah. yeah, exactly, a 701. Yeah. And the idea with that shotting pattern is that, if the, especially if the level's dropping, that's as, gonna show. Yeah, those two shots are gonna hit the bottom yeah. and with the long fibre tip, you're gonna realise yeah. I need to like adjust the depth. On the shelf. Yeah, because you can't just adjust your depth by an inch or two every two minutes, you'd never be no. fishing. That proper lead shot. Yeah, obviously it's allowed over there. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I would never use that rig over here. No. Nice little taper. Yeah, quite simple. And then the other reason for the um, sort of that type of line is you need to keep adjusting the amount of line between your tip and your float yeah as the depth changes and there's a here lost it That's there's it. two ways of doing that there's a nissa sell a little thing i think it's for a uh, pole feeder fishing yeah most people use those yeah connected to their elastic and then you can unravel some line to lengthen yeah Get that back on there before i lose it all Oh, yeah, cheers. So, because you're unraveling line and raveling it back on and fishing for a few days, it's good to use a, a robust line, a yeah. main line. I suppose the, the the heat and the sun and stuff like that. Yeah, although it wasn't hot, it was in May that match, so the, the temperature hadn't gone up yet. But it's just with the boulders, the rocks, and and the type of fishing, the big bulk of of lead. Yeah, you don't want to be moving no. that a lot, do you? And you do generally tend to put your rigs on your top kits and fish with them for three or four days, yeah. you know, you sort of tend to, to keep going with the same stuff, especially like being so able to- is that a hydro line or is it- Yeah, it's called Energy. Energy. Yeah, it's a, it's a Waggler line. They love that sort of line in Italy, don't they? Cole McDoom, like they all seem to- Oh, it's a brilliant Waggler yeah. line. It, it sinks immediately and it doesn't sink too far. They yeah. call it a suspending line. Right. It just, you, you, can, you can put washing up liquid on it and start fishing it, it'll sink. But it doesn't keep sinking. Don't just yeah. Don't keep taking on. Water, no, we don't do much waggler fishing. No. But for fishing, when I fished abroad, like you know, with mm. 12, 14, 16 gram wagglers, it's a great, mm. it's a great line. So yeah, so we were fishing that sort of rig for bream out, and then bigger droppers, bigger hooks. You know, for catfish, for catfish, you'd have like O twenty two main line. The old round, what's that? The round, yeah, four gram round. Mm -hmm. For catfish, you don't put much line on the bottom. So right. you'd bigger, they snatch at it more then, Yeah, bigger droppers, and you'd fish just half the hook length or two thirds of the hook length and, and edge it through. Generally, you fish sort of dead still for bream over there. So the catfish are a bit more... Catfish, you mm -hmm. tend to feed for them and go for them. They come out of their little lair right. in the rocks or whatever, but they're they're quite aggressive. You wouldn't keep feeding all day for them. You sort of feed, right, I'm going to go for them, feed, leave it five minutes and... Yeah, and like go. you were chop worm fishing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bait dropper in, leave it five and then drop on it. Let yeah. them settle type of thing. Five white maggots or a worm and a maggot. Yeah. Um, they're quite, they pick pick it out then. Yeah, they come in and hoover it. Yeah, they're greedy. But if you feed for them all the time... They soon back off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they're big fish. I had one at the end of kilo and a half. 
I've got that one in that flow and that. It did, what yeah. elastics like black hydro sort of that sort yeah, of Yeah, they tend uh, hydro do like a hybrid elastic. They generally yeah. use that, but like a two mil, one point eight mil yeah. for those. Yeah. Even for the bream they use quite heavy elastics. Do they? Yeah. To set the hook. Yeah, because you're using them flat. And boats. because the bottom of the uh the canal is rocks, the fish have got quite hard mouths, so mm. you really need to whack into them. It's always a bit of a contentious point because I always want to use soft elastics because that's yeah, what yeah. we're used to. And they do the top kits before I go because I brought all the gear and the elastics are like, Jesus. You're like, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, have to, <laughs> I have to sometimes sneakily sort of change them when no one's around yeah, so yeah. I don't offend anyone. But yeah. yeah, they really, they wang them right up. Yeah. They really do. Yeah, so that was um, that was the first match. So about how did the team get on with that? The team did all right. We got about 19 points which we sort of got away with it a little bit because the tactics were up in the air. Some of the lads... First one of the season. Yeah, some of the lads didn't really go for the catfish and paid the price. Other people had good matches, but it was the first one. You can drop a result. It's five matches. You can oh, drop right. one. Yeah, so... Yeah, we came home thinking we did okay. Yeah. I was happy enough to come third. Decent yeah. enough start. Considering how I'd done in practice the first day, I was a bit nervous after that. But, yeah, it all turned out sort of decent. Decent sort of getting that big fish at the end. It didn't actually get me any extra points, but it was quite nice to sort of skim him across the surface after yeah. giving him, stripping a load of elastic back. Um, and I'd, I know I was next to quite a good angler from Colmick as well on the day who I managed to beat. So that was, yeah, I was quite happy with that. Because every time I travel home, it's sort of like, you leave the match, sometimes I go straight to the airport mm. and I have to wait three or four hours for the fly. And, you know, you don't really want to be stuck there for a long time if you've had a bad match no. it's not quite like yeah yeah if you had a good match it's like oh, yeah yeah have a nice there. meal and yeah. a few beers and get on the plane if you've had a duffer yeah. it's a bit of a torturous it's not like driving an hour home so yeah so it's good to do well so that was the that was the first match and then we moved on to a couple of venues which were quite similar they were more like drains right full of little carp and carasio like this and these fish actually increase in size in the few weeks before the match. Really? Yeah, so they drain the canals in the winter. These are like irrigation canals, sort of 30 metres wide or, or less. And Basically uh, a big river around here then. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, I don't know, 20 like a 20 foot. foot. Yeah. yeah, like a 20 foot. And they drain them and uh, totally because really? they're irrigation canals. And in the, in the winter, they don't need anything to irrigate the crops. So they drain them, dry them out, and, and quite a lot of the fish die, believe really? it. Yeah. But the fishing clubs sort of net them, take fish and put them in ponds. Yeah. And some of the smaller canals have water in and the fish go in them. And sometimes to tackle the um the local clubs can persuade the farmers to leave some water in the canal for the fish, but the cormorants get in there. But it's unbelievable what happens. So they fill the canal up and literally like three weeks before the match, there'd be like hardly any fish there, like nothing. And then these little carp or carasio will appear that, that, that have been born that year. Really? Yeah, honestly. So they'd be like this big. And then as the matches, so when they start having a few matches and a bit of bait, and you've got to appreciate in a real hot country, everything grows. Twice as quick. Fucking unbelievable. So these mm. little fish, by the time we get to fish there, they're like 50, 60 grams. Right. Like two ounce or bigger. But every t it, they almost get bigger by the day. Really? Yeah. Yeah, honestly. I wonder all... you, you catch loads of fish then. Yeah, because it's Complete just like... opposite to here, isn't it? And everybody's catching like three, four, five kilos of them. Right. There's like absolutely millions of them. So the next two matches were really sort of quite similar in some ways that you were targeting these little fish on a top kit plus one. Right. Um... They're not really like roach the way they feed. They're more you, you have to like hold back dead hard. You get loads of little liners. You plop in little balls of ground bait and sticky mm -hmm. mag with gravel. You get tons of indications, and um, you have to sort of get you the, a bit more bristle showing type. Thing. Not really. You fish with rigs like this. So that's a lake, is it? This is a lake, yeah, which is ideal. This is the float I use. Carbon that, stem. Carbon stem, plastic, plastic tip. Grit. Shotted very tightly so you'd fish with sometimes even that shot on the bottom yeah and you can see the float fishing for lifts more than yeah you'd have it dotted to there and you'll get a lot of lifts or under, you're looking for a positive 
indication before you strike because you literally your float like is never it's never still yeah yeah and you're fishing maggots on the hook 16 hook to 010 because they're just so aggressive in yeah the there's millions of them like, yeah really? you, you're plopping little balls in and you've got to get your feed sometimes like stodgy ground bait's good sometimes dry ground bait's better the maggots you feed in the sticky mag is usually a proportion of like two parts gravel one part maggots right so, so they it's don't noise yeah, but not too many maggots because yeah, yeah. it sends them nutty. It's quite difficult. And you fish with a short line, you hold your float, hold it, get indications, let it go a little bit, it lifts. So it's moving what? It's moving, yeah. What, it's two gram pace? Or? Uh, well, you could be fishing four or five gram flat float on the long pole. Oh, well, okay. You know, it's probably six foot deep close in and probably like 10 foot in the middle. Right. So it's it's because they're so straight, they get a... You look at it and think, oh yeah, two, three grams. And when you fish it, you've got, got like pace. a volume yeah. pushing. So they, so I fished the first of these last two weekends. The first, the first one was on a canal called San Siro, and that one was, that one was little carasio more than little carp. So if it's little carasio, you feed more ground bait. If it's little carp, you feed more sticky mag. Mm -hmm. But in both cases, you need to feed a bit of both. But the proportion is more ground bait for Carasio and less sticky mag. So this one was Carasio. And I fished a practice match, came halfway in the section with three odd kilos. And then I fished the first match. And to be honest, I was like, I couldn't really get into it properly. It's very hard to get the feeding right. And our team were doing well putting in stodgy ground bait. And so I fished, it's, it's four hour matches. I fished for about two and a half hours and I was sort of doing all right, but nothing special. And and then one of the guys, the guy that owns Hydro, he's actually the best angler in the team. He doesn't fish. Right. He runs a bank and yeah, manages yeah. the whole thing. And he's on a bike up and down. And he came up to me and he said, look, they're catching shallow in the next section. Barla Benny's winning that section shallow. So is Barla Benny in your team? No, he yeah. fishes for two Tubertini. Two Tubertini. Yeah, but he was in the next section to me. He said he's sacking shallow. Right. He, get, he said, where's your shallow? Where's your shallow rig? Well, it was in me. I'd taken it off a top kit mm. and put it away because you end up with so many rigs, it can get quite sort of... Uh, so what was the difference between a shallow rig and that one then? Well, up in the water. Like a strung out rig? No, a little, like a little bleak rig. So a rapid, a Hydra Rapid, yeah, yeah. 0.3, with a little bulk oh. and two droppers. Oh, you use droppers even still? Yeah, or maybe a 0.5 all bulked yeah. with, a, with a six inch hook length actually, not too short, mm -hmm. and throwing in wet ground bait. And catching these carasio. Catching these carasio. Um, Slop and squat job. Yeah. <laughs> so I switched, right, the last hour. I got the rig out, clipped it on a top kit, because I tried it in a practice match. Nobody had caught a fish shallow in practice yeah. at all. But the weather, it had rained and then it had got hot. So the fish had obviously come up. And so I think the first match, that first I ended up with, I ended up second in my section with about just under four kilos, but I caught 120 fish in the last hour. Doing that method? Shallow, yeah. So that was the first day or? That was the first day and the team did well. And then the next day I drew in a similar area and basically I just went shallow. Mm. Just went shallow from the start and I had some, I had two really good anglers above me, one from um, Trabuco and one from Tubertini. And I went shallow and I caught, I ended up with, um, Six kilo, six seventy. It says here because I'm, I'm useless at remembering stuff. Three hundred and eight fish, and uh, we scored eight points that day. That put us right up in the league, and um, yeah, just basically caught shallow, chucking in wet ground bait. But halfway through the match, I changed to dry ground bait, and that really um, sort of made the swim kick on. Yeah, it was fading. Second, second. Give it a second yeah. wind. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It was because what was happening was I was getting this ground bait and and putting it in the bowl, slopping it up. And when I start, when I would feed it to start with, I'd catch really well. And then the longer I went on with it, obviously it must've absorbed more water and some of the particles that were floating Maybe. didn't. Yeah. So I thought, hang on, every time I go on this, every time I slop a bit up, I have a good spell. So I just started chucking it in dry and it, obviously the bits coming off it, just like what they went into overdrive. Yeah, really did. I bet they're not as finicky bites shallow, are they? Or? No, no, you fish with, um, you have to fish with quite a small hook, a 20 hook, a threaded maggot, chucking in this slop and what, flicking. Five, ten, like 
Uh, you used a 510, yeah, 510, yeah. 20, 209, and you have to flick around. It's like bleak fishing, yeah. really. you have to flick about, yeah. but they, they were chunky little fish. Three or four here, then three past your bait, yeah. and then three on your bait. And yeah, exactly that, yeah. and a lot of people were fishing whips with little floats, it wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't right. So, so we scored eight points, and I, I was second in my section. A bloke caught a 10 kilo 200 carp. In your section? And beat me. Oh. I was the best weight of Carasio in the zone. He was the only bloke who beat me, in, actually, in 100 pegs in, in the, the third and the fourth zone. But, yeah, 10 kilo, 200. Not on the whip? Not on the whip. He was lost three. Not shallow, or was he no, fishing on the bottom? No, filling it in with corn on the, on the long they do pole. That. It's weird how corn is such a big bait. Corn the is the thing. Isn't it? So the first match, corn, the guy next to me who caught the four kilo, 500 carp. He corn filled. are like our worms, aren't they? Yeah, he put, like, five tins in. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And this, Five tins. Yeah, this lad had been filling it in, sitting there on a flat float on the long path. He'd lost three. You could, you would normally lose almost every one, mm. generally, that you hooked, because they're like wild carp. Right. They're like... Big old sail fin on them and big Massive paddles, mouth. Yeah. And, yeah, they're s sort of skinny. Long. Just go for the far bank and yeah. you can't stop them. But he got 10 kilo 200. That's like 23 pounds. That's a big fish, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair play. Yeah. But unlucky for you, though, I suppose. He fished for it. Mm. He fished for it. He got it in. So, um, so that was yeah. So that, that weekend, I got two seconds, and the team we did really well, and the A team did really well, and it put us sort of set us up nicely for the last. So this going back to how you sort of mentioned that your team Hydra are good on these small fish. Yeah, these numbers. are the, Yeah, this is the sort of our well, not our teams strong strength yeah. if you yeah. like yeah yeah they're very good at sorting out the feeding yeah because the everybody has you know the rigs and the hooks and everything it's yeah. all everybody's on it but it's really the feeding some of them there's one or two in the team that are really really on it of, yeah they they can find out the little things that that to make the difference because the night before the match we have a proper briefing meeting where the tactics are really discussed in depth and, and it makes a big difference, you know. So is the the main guy you mentioned? Is does he give the meetings or no, does everyone? Sort they, of... He's got two sons. Well, well, he's got a stepson and a, and a, another son. And the the, the stepson, um, he's sort of like the technical guy. He, he leads the meeting, discusses the tactics, right. and, and says what the plan is, yeah. which has come out of the practice. But during the practice, when we're all split up, you know, if somebody's catching on something, they're soon on the phone, and Giancarlo. The, um, the owner of Hydro, he'll go and see him on his bike and then he'll get to everybody on the bank and tell them what to do mm. or what's working, even to the degree he'll turn up and watch you and he'll go just, you know, say something like, hold back a little bit harder, go another 10 centimetres on the bottom and then he'll go and you try it and you, mm. it's a big help, I tell you, he gets, he gets the team a lot of points. Mm. A bit like you see John Desk, he's like, yeah, and about Mark Downs and, and yeah. Darren Bickerton, you know, come back with good info and just, oh, just try this for five minutes, and it's, and that's how you build your, yeah, build your uh, tactics and your plan. Watching other teams, what they're doing. Yeah, or t or things, more things that anglers within our team are do have tried and it's worked, and 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 he quickly transfers that info to the rest of the team yeah. during the practice session, so everybody gets on it and can try it and, and improve it from there because somebody else might try it and then say, oh yeah, but I did this as well and yeah. and, and that's how it works. Team plan's gone, yeah. sorted. Yeah, but like I say, because there's no individual money or glory or anything. Everyone's fishing for each everybody's other. Everybody's like sharing the info 110%. Brilliant. Yeah, it's good. So yeah, so we went into the last match on um, a canal near Mantova. Um, called Reverie, which was the opposite of San Siro in that it was little carp, a lot of little carp short with sticky mags, similar, yeah, similar tactics and some and some nice fishing on a long pole with a flat float, but for these slightly bigger carasio, right, which um, bit similar that you get lift bites. You have to fish with a couple of shot on the bottom, a shortish hook length, maggots, ground bait, sticky mag. Um, and on that one, I fished the practice match on the Thursday, and I managed. I won my section. I actually caught a bream, which is quite rare for this place. Really? It's only six hundred grams, but I won the section with like just under four kilos. Oh right, Brucey bonus. The Brucey bonus. So I won the section in that one, which I was happy about. And then 
the first day of the match, I drew very close to where I was in the practice match and I actually won the section again, just with little Carasio. I did catch a little carp at the end. And uh, by this point, our A team and our, I'm in the C team, our A and C team were in contention for winning the league. Yeah. We'd done pretty well since Adria. We'd really done well on these small fish venues. And we sort of did all right on the, we got 12 points, our team. And I think the A team sort of got similar and we actually dropped a little bit down the leaderboard. And that evening, sort of, we had a meeting and it was a bit like a lot of people were quite deflated because mm. we felt like we were going to... It's look, a good match and we're going to go yeah, on. Yeah, the A team especially thought, you know, going to steamroller this league and win it. And we actually dropped back a few places, both teams. But we had a meeting and, you know, the main people in the team sort of said, look, you could take this position at the start of the season. You would, you know, if you said there's one match to go and you're in the top five and there's only mm. a handful of points in it, you'd take that, wouldn't you? Yeah, so everybody yeah. sort of, yeah, OK, let's... Let's go for it. Same again tomorrow. Yeah. And what happened was, so I drew in an area where there was no little fish short. I had to fish a long pole and, and you catch a few, then you wouldn't catch a few. And uh, and I, I've, there's a guy who comes and counts my fish. He comes to every match. He's not actually in Hydra. Right. This guy, Giorgio. And he, he turned up at one match and then Giancarlo said to him, look, you sit here and count the fish. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. So he literally, but everybody's got somebody doing this. They'll, they'll sit there and count, they'll tick your fish off and they'll tick off the fish that your neighbours are catching. Right. And sometimes there's a bit of gamesmanship with misleading info coming oh, off other yeah. runners. And, yeah, yeah, uh, and, yeah. But Giorgio, he never, he's brilliant. He's a brilliant bloke. He comes down, he sits there and he just counts the fish. And if I want to know how many fish I've got or how I'm doing in the section, he tells me. And in the, in the matches previous where he'd been there, I'd always done well. But in this one, I was getting like bad vibes off him. Mm. He was trying to give me a little bit of advice. and, and but, So it turned out in the end, I did actually win my section again with about a low weight, three kilos of these little Carasio. And our team won it on the day. So we, the we, C team? Our C team scored seven points. And the A team scored about eight points. So we ended up first and second in the league. That's mega, isn't it? Yeah. And that's the top? Well, how it works is there's these six divisions, each of them are equal, and then the top so many teams out of each division go into the finals, right. which is run over. So this is our division, yeah. which is on a level with the other six divisions. It's the biggest division, so the most, I think, 12 teams go through. Um, but yeah, it was brilliant to be first and second. Our team was half, half a point behind the A team. Over the four matches? Over the five matches. Yeah, yeah, you dropped one result. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it was... Good fishing. Good fishing. I ended up sixth individual on the right. points. Yeah, out of 200. I was well pleased with that. And, um, yeah, really successful. And Both enjoyed it. were well chuffed for that, Yeah, they? brilliant. Yeah, really pleased. Yeah, they sell a lot of products off the back of that, especially yeah. the small fish tackle, the hooks, the floats, and, and just good kudos, really, yeah, for the yeah. team. Yeah, yeah. Right. So then this Waggler final, does that leave, is this where? Yeah, so this is where the, it gets more difficult. Right. It's quite difficult anyway, yeah. but this is where, yeah, so the, the, the six divisions, so many teams out of, out of each division go to this finals, which is run over two weekends, four matches. And this, this is where the, the sort of, where you're going to bump into the top anglers. There's yeah. going to be more top anglers in yeah. your division. And... Um, so you can get eliminated. Yeah. So half the teams get eliminated on the first weekend and then it gets to the final weekend. Whoever wins the finals, you, you scrub all your points from the division, start afresh, and whoever wins the finals goes to represent Italy in the World Club Championships. All right. The whole thing is right. to that end. So yeah, it's yeah. A, quite a long series of matches. So yeah, it's on this lake. So going back to the first day, say there's 20, Say there's 30 teams the first yeah. day, does that cut down to 15 teams? No, the first week, you all fish the first weekend. Weekend, Yeah, right, and okay. then so many teams get, half the teams are out and yeah. half the teams go through. I think it's about half. Um, Do you think that could work over here for a winter league final? I like have two two weekends? We used to have a semi-final, didn't we? Yeah. Do you we think that to... would, that, you know, you'd cut down on the, or have a Saturday and Sunday the first week and half go through on each one and then have a final the week after 
Do you yeah, think a competition maybe. like that would work over here, or what with smaller teams? Or, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I might don't know. Do, it could be. do. I mean, it's. I don't really know. Yeah. Alex. Depends if people would want to commit how much time. That's it. Towards it, like, like I say, in Italy, there's nothing else really. This is it. You know, this is the main thing. There's nothing competing mm. with it. I suppose when you think about it, though, it's no different. Like a lot of teams are coming down the week before practicing for the Winter League final. You do that, fish the Saturday, Sunday, you get through, you come back, and you, no one can fish it between the two type of thing, between the yeah. that match and the next match, and then it's still only two weekends, isn't it? I guess so. Yeah, I mean, well, you'd have a smaller final, I suppose, or, yeah. or you could have a bigger semi-final. Yeah, you know, and then. But that's how they do it. Mm, that's so how they do it. is good. That yeah. is good. Gives so, everyone a chance, and then fishing must be better as well, surely. Well, this venue is unbelievable. Is this the Wagga venue? Yeah. <laughs> this is a place called Kulbara. Right. I think Tommy Pickering's been there. I think one or two people have been there. It's a natural, it's like um, a massive natural lake that's dammed. It's a dammed stream river yeah. that's turned into a massive lake. It's the down in, in Umbria, which is down near Lazio towards Rome. So it's a fair Isn't that trek. That's your favourite float, Umbria. Umbertide. Umbertide. That's, that's not far yeah. from there. Oh, that's right. a river. I think Umbria is a, is a body up float that Colmick do, actually. Is it? Yeah. Is it I really? think that's where I've got it from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bit sad, though, though that, isn't it, really? It is weird. Yeah. You do own a tackle shop. Yeah. So, yeah, so this place is like unbelievable. It's this big lake, there's four zones. I think there must be. I think there must be 50 teams or 40 teams in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're on both banks, got your zone. It's waggler only. Bloodworm and jokers allowed, chopworms allowed. You've got ground bait limit. You have to use a catapult. You can't throw ground bait. Why? Yeah. Why is that? Because I think there's actually a distance you're not allowed to fish within. I don't think you're allowed to fish within 15 metres. Right. Because in the past, there's been so many fish there, people have been under. Oh, right, yeah. And just a bit like short feeder on in the feed. At like Tamar, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, this place, like, it's... Well, how deep is it? Quite shallow? You're fishing a fixed waggler. You can fish a slider. It's about two metres. Right. Two, two point two, two. It depends what bank you're on. One bank's deep. I, I come on, I fish on the shallow bank. I've been there twice. And it's... The fishing, it can. It, I've been there when it's been rubbish due to the conditions, but generally it's really good. I mean, the first match, the Saturday match, um, in the first week on this final first weekend, I caught 32 kilos. 32, in four hours in on four a wagon, hours on of a skimmers wagon. and carasio. The carasio are a kilo each, right. and the skimmers, skimmers are, are like five, yeah. six hundred grams. Right. And you feed with a catapult, obviously, and it's really, really, really technical. You have to feed... Not too much. Skimmers in, 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 in Italy, you don't feed a lot of bait for them. Yeah. They're weird. You go to France. I've been to France where I've fed two and a half kilos of joker in a match for skimmers. And yet in Italy, you can catch 30 kilos by using like 300 mil. Right. Like not a lot at all. Keep like, them in your peg. Yeah, and don't, they go a bit funny if you put too much in. But yeah, I had 32 kilos. I was fourth in my section with that. Really? I got beat by... Fourth of, out of your 30? 10. Out of your 10? Yeah. And uh, I got beat by 50 grams. I can't remember what weight won the section. I was quite a way off the top two, at least six or seven kilos. Then like, like 40 odd kilos, 50 kilos. There was one section, there was three 50 kilo yeah, weights. Yeah, I think I see that on, you know, when you share all the results yeah. all on the spreadsheets and I thought. And it's not hey, stocked. Am I really, is that five kilos, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's not, and they don't natural. stock it. It's really? natural. It's nat there's cormorants on it. There's tons of cormorants on it. There's right. massive carp coming out. Jumping, you know, this. Yeah, it's uh, it's and, it, and it's sort of in the middle of these mountains and hills. It's just like spectacular. It's really unbelievable. And so, yeah, the first day I had thirty-two kilos. The next day, it didn't. I had a much lower weight. I think I had sixteen kilos, which I was fifth in my section that time. But I was like a sort of kilo was, off third. Was one of the days like really windy? The second day, it blew yeah. a gale. I think that might have been the video I seen, and yeah. I thought the first day everyone sat there like in shorts, time, and the yeah. second day it's it like was horrendous. And you're I, seeing like chucking wagglers and I'm, honestly, 16 kilos in those conditions, like here, you wouldn't, you just wouldn't catch a fish. Your mm. float was just hammering through with the wind, fishing bunches of bloodworm because it's the only thing the fish would hang on to, and 
I did make a mistake that match. I started to, I, I looked at the forecast and it said this wind was coming, but it was flat calm at the start. And then I re-looked at the forecast and it didn't, it wasn't 100% whether this wind was going to turn up. And I started at about 32 metres and the wind came and I had to come shorter and, and, and didn't, it, it cost me a little bit, but even so. Basically if, like strut pegging in that wind. Really. It was unbelievable. You had to cast into the next bloke's peg, <laughs> right? And your float would trim up in front of you. You're trying to fire a ball out before it gets out. Because the pegs are like, they're so close. Yeah. Honestly, it's not like here. You, don't, <laughs> you get 12 metres max. 12 metres really? is considered a big, a big peg. So second day, 16 kilos. It's still 35 pound. That's mad, isn't it? and that was fifth in the section. And, and I was a bit unlucky. I caught small fish, um, especially the oh, second you know, day. You know, like, with, are they allowed, are you allowed to hair rig corn? I know. It might You're not be. allowed to hair rig anything. Any, really? Nothing. No. no, no hair rigging. Right. No hair rigging. We were fishing worms, like a, a big red worm and a white maggot, or, or five blood worms, six blood worm and a maggot, or two or three little bits of worm and some blood worm, those sort of baits, something soft. Yeah, and get in the mouth like quickly yeah yeah and they hang on try and hang on I mean, it's not always windy like that but it was uh but it's such a difficult because the it's good anyway in the division but in the finals there's really no room for error yeah it's because the, the weights are so high but at the end it's so close it's like one fish always costs you like two percent you think one fish in four hours you know yeah. how can that how can it be so close? How can everybody catch such similar weights? But, but would yeah. it be uh, considered as a world championship venue, that? or Because there's a lot know. of world championships in Italy. You know, you see the yeah, I don't think Masters were would. there recently, weren't they? I don't think there's enough pegs on it. Really? Mm, the bank's a bit, some of it's a bit in and out. Um, no, I think they're, they're, they've just had the feeder world championships masters and veterans on a canal in Italy. Mm -hmm. They're the type of places they tend to use a yeah. bit easier. Look like and, and drains. And this me. lake does actually flood. Does it? Yeah, if, if it rains, all the water goes in off the, off the hills and goes in through the river. A bit like a Tamar. Yeah, exactly. Like that. a freak venue. Yeah. Like that. I've been there where all the wood, there's loads of wood on the banks, like logs and trees and stuff. And, and if the level comes up, it can come up like two foot mm. and all the wood goes I've, yeah. I've seen this, <laughs> this this shoal of wood, if you like, in the middle of the lake, about half a mile long. Yeah. It, so it's a pretty wild. Mm. So it's, it's unique venue. Yeah, it's always a bit in when question whether they should it use in, it or not yeah. in these matches because it can. They have cancelled the match there in the past when everyone's been there for like yeah. four days or whatever. So yeah, we got knocked out. Our team. After us. After the first day or? After the first weekend, worst weekend. fished both days. Our, t our A team went through. Um, I could have actually fished in the in the, the second weekend for the A team, but it clashed with the census challenge in France, yeah, which yeah. I'd always sort of committed to yeah. going on. So so that's sort of where it ended for me. It's a bit of a challenge, the finals. It's, yeah. it's I suppose that's sort of prime time over there, same here, everything happens in... August, September, October, doesn't it? Yeah, so they start in May. Uh, they don't fish in August because it's holidays and it's too hot. I mean, some of the, we had a match at the end of August. It was 35 degrees. Right. You know, you have to um, you have to try and deal with the heat. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you can't say stay out fishing all day. You have to get back to the digs in the afternoon. But you have to manage it. You have to manage yourself, not get too hot, drink a lot. Try and chill out when you can. But it's great in the practices. You fish and... Uh, because we're talking about the fishing, the tactics, but the social side of it is brilliant. I mean, we've, we practice as a team. It'll get to like one o'clock. You leave the bank, go to the local bar and have yeah. lunch. Oh, right. Yeah. Just go, yeah. go back. And then go back and make a few rigs. And... Yeah. Nice. It's like eating's important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eating and drinking. Yeah. So that was, you know, what with that and going to Hungary on the Euros with England, that's quite a lot of time, effort and mm. and, and good fishing, good. yeah. So obviously, are you going back out there this year? Yeah, I plan to, yeah. I'm just gonna- Is it the same venues? Or? It's Adria again, yeah, the same, the title. Which obviously this year, you'll know a lot more. Yeah, I've got a, You better take more of your own gear or? I've made me rigs already. Yeah. Can't wait to go, got more of, 
it will be different though. Yeah. Like all these places, they change. They adapt. Yeah, so Adria, then we've got um, San Siro, where I caught shallow again. Yeah. And we've also got Spinadesco. Right. Which is a concrete canal near Cremona, which where I'm pretty sure Will became world champion there. And England right. won the world championships. It's got two concrete banks, about 35 metres wide, doesn't move. It's changed a lot. I used to fish that canal when I lived there, and I actually remember the last time I fished it before I came home. It was one of my favourite places. So mm, you're looking forward to that. I'm well, really yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah. yeah. And then Hungary, the bronze medal in Hungary. No, Hungary, we were fourth. Fourth. Yeah, we were fourth. I think we might have won the second day. Yeah, because uh, weren't you sort of quite a way off first day and then clawed it back, or was yeah, it the other way around? Yeah, it was basically the second day. I think we scored 15 points. Right got close but not quite yeah it was a difficult venue because because the way you got five five sections and the first two days in practice we drew a and then b and a and b were totally different to the rest of the match venue right and we even drew a1 we were stuck in this little corner at the right. beginning of the match length and the sort of those sections changed during the week but we weren't there right so you, what you were there learning on the first day wasn't what they were learning on the last day. Totally different. No. So I drew in B on the first day. And when we practiced A and B, there was no bleak. C, D and E, there was a big gap between B and C. Mm. And in C, D and E, there was more fish of all types, but there was a lot of bleak. But I drew in B, but luckily... Oh, Oh, well, not luckily, but I decided to prepare some stuff for bleak, even yeah. though it wasn't on the agenda, and there was bleak there. Right. So I was, I did the right thing. Because really. the venues were quite far apart, weren't they? The it was on the same bank, but it was just this interruption between B and C, a great big gap. Right. It was all on the same lake, on the same bank, but they was it was very shallow in A and B, and quite deep. You were fishing off rocks in C, yeah. D and E, whereas the pegging was a bit... The bank was in and out and the pegs were really tight and there was weed and it was a different... But because we hadn't been there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we weren't really up to speed on right. those sections because we could have done with like Thursday being in Is that B. the one where Godfrey caught a snake or so and took a bleak? Was that... Yeah, that, that, was, that was in the practice. That was off the match. Yeah, thing. yeah. Yeah, that was a little... Some venue, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a great venue, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I caught... Um, I caught some better fish at the end. I caught some Carasio and big skimmers. I think the first day I was fifth in my section of 14. And then the second day I didn't really draw that well. The second day I had an awkward peg with a lot of weed. and But the bleak were there. And I ended up fourth in my section. I think, I can't remember what weight. I had about five kilos just under, something like that. Sections of 15. Mm. So Big sections. Big sections, a lot of pressure. Um... Then it panned out okay. Yeah, did all right. And then World Champs was on the Ebro. Yeah, I went to watch that. That looked some venue. <laughs> oh, you were I saying mean, about the the Waggler venue, but the Ebro looked oh, no. like well, well this it looked is like what, March on steroids, didn't it? It was like this is the thing. There's places out there. Yeah. I mean, before the World Championships, who what English angler would have known about that? Well, maybe some well, catfish anglers. millions of catfish anglers go out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, like I say, people say, oh, this is the best this and this is the best that and blah, blah, blah. But these places are out there that are just off the scale. And the scenery looked amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The scenery, the amount of fish are very hard, physical to fish to hand in those depths and the heat and... and day after day you know i wasn't fishing obviously i was there just watching so they don't have like festivals on there like you know like we go to ireland and have festivals over well, there all these places have potential yeah you know corbara that lake it's like tamar on steroids Is it? you know you would if it was if it was in england you'd there'd be festivals on it non-stop with yeah. prize money but they just don't have that mentality, mentality yeah they've tried to run matches on commercials with big money nobody wants to fish them right it's just not program that way you know it's not yeah. it's been Completely like that for years and, and that's how it will remain and, and you know I love fishing there but I love fishing here mm. you know I wouldn't want to just be in that structured sort of mm. thing year after year but after year that uh, is it the Iberian Masters that's Spain is it not that's Spain yeah but that the fishing looks really difficult and like what 
yet they've got venues like that, Ebro, whatever. Why is that not on there? Surely that would... Uh, that's organised by a tackle shop. Like, is it? That is a good venue. Because the... they have the pole side and the feeder side. So it started with the pole side. I used to fish it um, years ago. Me and Brad and Steve Gardner um, used to go and fish that. And um, the float venue is much better than the feeder venue. Right. Right, so it's been a float match for years. The fishing. And the feeder bits tagged on with the feeder boots. Yeah, it used to thing. catch like 30 kilos. They still do, 50 kilos sometimes. Right. Carp, big carasio, anything from a one gram float to a 50 gram flat float, dependent on the amount of rain. Sticky mag, ground bait, soil worms. I think the last time I fished that match, I decided it was going to be the last time I would fish it and I was just going to go for it with the bait. You need a ton of bait. I think the last day I spent 110 euros on bait for that one match. Really? Yeah, and I sort of ended up about fifth or sixth in the festival and I decided I was never, it's too much, yeah, it's too expensive. Yeah, ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, but the fishing, on the float venue, the fishing is brilliant. I don't really understand the attraction on the feeder venue. I mean, I haven't been, but the, no. the fish is not a patch. I suppose it's the competition, isn't it? It's yeah, it's the whole thing, isn't it? it is, yeah. yeah. It's the social side of it, the, the being in Spain. and But there's also the Merida Masters, right. which is in Merida, which is Is that where venue. it's like absolutely solid with crash? It, is at the, it has been the last yeah. couple of years, yeah. So that's just coming up. And the Feeder World Championships is on Merida this year. So the Feeder, they have the similar thing. They have the float and the Feeder. There's a lot of English, I think the England team and, and the various people interested in it are, are going to fish that. But that's a better venue. Yeah. So the, the World Champs this year is France, is it not? Yeah, that's oh, in right. Bethune, yeah. That's where the Census Challenge finally Yeah, I went there twice last year to fish it. That's a hard venue. Yeah. Yeah, but it's an interesting venue. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Euros is... It's in Holland, oh, in, right. in a place called Spannerberg, right. which is on another canal between two lakes where you're fishing for bream, yeah. like big bream, um, some little fish short, bream will decide yeah. the points. But because of these, it, the fishing's not too bad, apparently, this is a, what I've heard from my friends in Holland, but it has the potential to become really good. Right. Because of the lakes. And if the fish come out of Again, the, the feed. Yeah. The feed go. Like in Italy, yeah. all the venues get better in the practice. The opposite of our venues. I was going to say, like, we're trying not to use keep nets and stuff like they that. They don't use keep nets oh, in Italy. Well, You're not allowed to use a keep net in practice. That's, and that, that's, that is a brilliant. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. You know, that is a great thing because these little fish, you're just plopping them back in. And, They're like, oh, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're tough little hardy yeah. fish. They're not like roach and little no. bottle top skin. No. A little carp is a tough little yeah. fish, especially in those temperatures. They're, they're hardy. But yeah, you're not allowed. So yeah, no keep nets in, in, in Italy on the, in, in any practice, apart from the practice matches, obviously. But yeah, so yeah, so Holland on paper could be, could be fishing for decent weights of, of bream. Yeah, massive boats. Both venues got enormous boats on it, which take a bit of sort of getting used to. Mm. You I suppose know. your ground bait has to be mixed differently for that, does it? Or again, you know, it's not quite how you think. Right. Without, I've been there, and obviously the info I've sort of learned, yeah. I want the England team to benefit yeah. from. So I don't yeah. want to like, but it's not quite as as drastic as what it looks, no. put it that way. No. Yeah, there's a little bit to it, and there's a little bit of getting your head in the right place to deal with yeah. what's going on, because these, these boats have got containers. The bloke driving the boat's got his car on the back of the boat. Right. That's how big they are, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? They're massive, yeah. they're massive. Massive concerns. Yeah, so it's all about canals this year. Mm. Yeah. Brilliant, so you're looking forward to it then? Well, I don't know if I'm in the team. Oh, right, right. oh, sorry, <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I thought, I thought, oh, right. No, 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 that's that. the venues. I don't oh, know about right. the venues. I don't know if I'm fishing or not. We'll find out in the next few weeks, I suppose. Right. But, yeah. But I mean, like, for really your, your Hydra team and that. Yeah, yeah, I'll be out there, 100%. And is the final, if you get through, is the final of that lake again? It will be. Yeah. And then it moves on. Um, I think, actually, they went back to Adria on the, the White Canal, Canal Bianco for the second. Yeah, so... The Is previous year, the A team ended up third. In the whole thing? In the whole thing, only a point off winning it. On so that the, venue? And the top two go to the World Club, so there was only like, mm. I think they tied with the team that was second. And then, so going to the World Clubs from here is, is it Barnsley and Starlets? Barnsley and Dorking? It's not us, no. It's definitely Barnsley. 
It was. Um, Did it start second? It was from the fish off on the Gloucester, wasn't it? Yeah. They had a float national. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think it, yeah, much I think, about that this year. No. Is that happening again? Or? No, I think it's uh, whoever wins the Division One National. Oh, back to how it used to be. And maybe the second team as well. Right, okay. I think it depends on the size of the venue that the World Clubs is on. If it can accommodate extra teams, you can have two right. per nation from... I don't know 100% yeah. how it works. Have you been out World Clubs with Dorking? Yeah, twice. Yeah, we fished one at Cabasau in Portugal. We came third. Yeah. And we fished one in Italy on Ostellato, which we won. Right. Yeah, which was... That's a big deal then, isn't it? <laughs> in Italy. <laughs> in Italy, beating... It was Lenzo Emiliano with the Italian team. Uh, they were second. Yeah, that was uh, quite something, Amazing. to be honest. Amazing. Well, yeah. I think we've um, we've gone over the 40 minutes that Andy planned for us. Yeah. Because uh, he's changed the card for... Three or four times, yeah, I think. Yeah, waffling. So. <laughs> I don't know, I hope, I hope it's not too Yeah, no, I, I, I find it, it such interesting because you yeah. don't get to hear about this aspect of fishing, you know, all the podcast. I mean, I, li I listen to Will Raisin's podcast and he, this is what he loves, this is what he lives for. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's amazing really to listen to what happens, what we don't do, if you know what I mean. So. But like I say, we're pretty, a lot of the Italian anglers really look to England as... You know, they want to know about Fishermania. They they look at yeah, it and think, yeah. "Wow, that's it's amazing in England," which it really is when you think about it. Mm. We've got some fantastic competitions, and we've got our fishing could be a bit better. Our venues could be yeah. a bit more uniform and less MPEGs, and and sometimes it can be frustrating if you're not getting the rub of the green at the draw. But you know, we're not doing too bad here. Yeah. Really, I wouldn't Brilliant. knock it too much. Brilliant. And I know you've done some videos with Andy. So yeah, you've been uh, out look today. Out for those as well. Yeah. Um, thanks for coming on the podcast. Oh, you're welcome. It's been good. Yeah, it's gone um, quick, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's for us, but I don't know about anyone else. But yeah. Well, they so, might not watch it. They might switch it off after yeah. two minutes. Might be a double two part of this one. Oh, do you I know what I mean? Know. Yeah. Three. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Three. Oh, God. Cool. So anyway, thank you very much, mate. You're welcome. Appreciate your time. Any time. So that was um, Simon Wilson explaining his Italy ex escapades. I just think it's great when. It amazes me. So he's got two bases. Yeah. He's got two sets. Of, well, I don't know how many sets of kit he's got. Well, I think it, he's got gear out there that they all sort of supply for him and he takes a few rigs and a bit of this, a bit of that. Um, so, yeah, he flies over there and they pick him up from the airport and, like he's explained, yeah, great. That's that's the way to do it, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's got to make you a better angler over here as well because you're going to learn new tactics that you can bring to different situations. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Talking of good angles, mate, mm. we'll get on to you last. You've right. been awesome again. Well, after letting the team down last week, you know, I was back with a, back with a bang. You, you know. didn't let them down, mate. No. No, you know you didn't. The draw let me down. Yeah. We'll get on to that last. You've been, you were like... Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love you, Alex. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right, I, match results. I haven't got anything from the, um, the, the Lincolnshire lads, but I think it's because they've probably been rained off or flooded out. Or... Yeah, it's that time of year now where everyone's just had enough, I think. I think the mud... The rain, the weather, everyone's just like, oh, I need a break. You did make a flippant comment about Boston. What? About being washed out, and maybe it needed washing out. <laughs> well, maybe maybe we've fallen out of them because your flippant comment about Boston. Well, well yeah, I've, I've lived in Boston for a little while, and I can assure you it's a shithole. <laughs> 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 That's your Boston itself, but all the little villages and that around the outside are nice. Yeah, they're good, they're good people around Dig there. yourself out of a hole. They're good people yeah, around yeah. there. But, uh, they are friendly people. I don't know if they'll get one more match in before the end. They, they might do. It might fine down. But I think like their leagues are finished now. Yeah. And yeah, I think everyone's just a bit ready yeah. for a break or ready for a new change with different style of fishing, aren't they? You're so, right. I haven't fished at all. No. No. What's the point? I want to get my kayak out. I can't get anywhere because it's all flooded. Mm. So I'm thinking, just have a break. Yeah. Chill out. Spring will be here soon. I can try something different. Yeah. Anyway, let's crack on. What have you got? Well, we have, there isn't many match results, like we just said, but um, the Ramsey boys were out Wednesday and Sunday at their secret place, Ramsey St Mary's. Um, Wednesday's winner was Kev Malt with, a, with eleven pound three and a half. Benjamin, but an eight pound two, just beating his brother off the next peg by an ounce, who had eight pound one. Oh. Yeah. Tight one. Tight, tight match there, uh, and then Sunday. Mount Plant, £14.1. Danny Needham, £11.6. 
and then Benjamin Button again, £9 free. So not as big a weight, just get the feeling that the fish are starting to migrate now, even though it's been cold and the roach and that that people were catching, they're, especially with March as well, I feel like the, the fish are moving. Daylight hours? Daylight hours. Got to be in there. Yeah, 100%. Um, the Saturday boys, Wiltersey Saturday Club, um, they were at Cop... No, they weren't. They were at Glassmore Bank on the carrot wash. And it was tramming, from what I've heard. Obviously, we had a lot of rain again Friday. Colossal amount of rain. Uh, Mike Moen, £1.04. Brian Best, 11 ounces. And then Andy Lawrence, 6.5 ounces. So Got a half in there anyway. Yeah, they're, they're doing their best to keep John Taylor away again, aren't they? So oh, um, Is that code? Have they got a little code between I reckon. Us? They must have, mustn't they? Um, the Muller. The Mullers. <laughs> and then... Um, that's it, apart from obviously the hay jack. There's, I've, unless, you know, I can't see of any. I think um, the Tuesday boys really struggled this week on the bower. Um, Can I just say something about match fishing? Yeah. So, obviously, I went to see the Arsenal ladies yesterday. Yeah. And A.D. Stokes was there on Facebook. Right. And I could tell he's obviously bombed out in the hay jack yesterday. Right, OK, yeah. So he's gone from up there last week. Yeah. A.D. you've gone to... Well, Hero to zero has it. You might, you might have ruined. You might have ruined one of the chip shots. Oh there. no! Yeah. Or have I added to it? There was quite a few. There was quite a few chip shopping. But Aidy Stokes was. He was. He was rude there yesterday was, on social media. Was he? He was rude. Yeah. yeah. Adrian, that was. There's no need for swearing. He, he loves the banks. He loves the mud. He loves the banks. Put it that way. <laughs> was he? Was he complaining? He was cursing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just got to get on with it, innit? Well, you? that's a stereotypical Spurs fan, isn't well, it? Yeah, they're fair weather, we're fair weather fans. He was moaning at the start. <sighs> no, we had a real good laugh, actually. We had some good banter on the bank yesterday. Which... Go on, what happened? Because it's um, um, it was a colossal match. Yeah, so as everyone was telling me, I was going to peg A11, which was Bennett peg 11. Oh, were you getting a bit of a... Um... Yeah, yeah, everyone was like, yeah, you're going to draw there, you're going to draw there. And I was like, probably, probably. Who drew for you? Um, who drew? Me. I drew. Uh, yeah, I drew. Um, Darren, who normally draws, uh, he wasn't very well, bless him, so he didn't fish. And I was, me and Dad were both gutted that he weren't being there just because he draws bung holes. Was that everywhere. the message you put out? Yeah, so lastminute.com, poor old Darren weren't very well at all and he would have done everything to yeah. to be there. And um, so we won short in the March team, which was... Who stepped up? Nobody, we couldn't get anyone. So we fished with five men instead of six, hence why we completely bombed out in the league and, and on the day as well. But, um, yeah, so... If that happens in the future, right, if I'm, like, free, yeah. just to add curiosity, yeah. could we cobble enough kit together? Yeah, probably, yeah. That'd be funny, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would, yeah. 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 They'd be under pressure either side, wouldn't they? They'd... <laughs> they would call them, mate. <laughs> They'd be going like that, wouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> and, um... Where's your pipe float? That's yeah, it's <laughs> over there, mate. A bit of corn on, <laughs> yeah. clonk. Yeah. <laughs> Have you got another keep now? What for? Well, I've got free carp and attention. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I did a draw and Bob, Cheesy Bob, was at Benny, which he wanted because he normally he always wins the last match of the season on Hajak because he's a bit of a tench god and he's a red eyed monster. And he drew peg seven at Benick. So I was like, oh, I'll do it for the tench feed. He'll be bang on it. But Benick was, was grim again. Uh, March town itself, so we had four sections, sorry, three sections to the right or below the bypass bridge, starting from near the, um, what we call the willows, and um, all the way up to the bypass. And it was very consistent all the way through, as it always is. Lots of real small fish, not many big rud about. Um, but I think it might have been a 27 or 29 pound would have won below, which is still a fantastic weight. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I drew. F2, so I was 12 pegs from the bridge, so would have been... Um, five or six past the yes. marina entrance? Yes, so I was, yeah, literally five past the marina entrance. One, two, three, four, yeah, five. Opposite a blue boat? Yeah, green boat. Green boat, yeah. Um, no, no the, to be honest, if it was before Christmas, that's where you wanted to be when it gets real cold because the roach tend to have been on this boat and then they move, filter out. So it was classed as the epicentre, to be fair, um, before Christmas. But going down there, I thought it's not going to be a roach match today. It's going to be a rug match, basically. Um, so sort of 
talking to James Drack on my left all day, telling him how he's going to win the match and a bit of nice banter, as always, and Adrian the other side of him. So, um, yeah, started the match on uh, a single piece of sweet corn. Yeah, proper Fenland style. What size hook? I started on a 14, but I went to a 12 in the end because <laughs> yes. it made no difference. He just gives me so much <laughs> crap when I say, you've got to use these big hooks. <laughs> go hard or go home, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. So... I and start... also, right, so we did a video down yeah, there. Yeah. And remember... We, we got the corn out, didn't Yeah, and you were going, I can't believe I'm having to use corn. Yeah, I know. And now it's your go to. Now it's like a method. You are you're the <laughs> corn king. A lot of people <laughs> laugh, to be fair. I got quite a lot of stick when I did that video. Corn, sweet corn, uh, what are you... Double bluffiness or whatever. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it turns out that there's just that many small rudd down there and small fish. The only way to get to these fish is to fish corn. Yeah. I fed probably pint and three quarters of corn. Rudd are a bit different. You, you know, you, if you can feed lots of hemp, but I, I was fine that when the bigger fish are there, the hemp attracts, attracts them initially and then they back off to the noise and sort of suss it out. But, yeah, so I've just fished waggler, corn, <laughs> Um, pretty much it. front to back. I've come off it three or four times, tried the pole, because I thought, well, if I can catch on the pole, the same size fish, I'll catch quicker and more consistently and stuff. Um, but the pole, it was a fisher chop, but they're really small, really small. I think every... it's nice, though, wasn't it, with a rod reel? Waggler. Yeah, I do like waggler fishing, yeah. especially when you're getting bites. And that's yeah. unique, isn't it? It is, yeah. 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 Um, so I started yeah. on the waggler, had one first chuck, like, People still cupping in ground bait and with rods bent double with a six ounce rod, so I'm thinking just keep going and going. And then I got after about an hour and a bit, I thought, I've got an impression there's a serious amount of ruddy and they're not going to move. <laughs> but I thought, I thought I've got to rest it because I was having to sort of chuck about my peg. You couldn't sort of yeah. muller one line, yeah. if you know what I mean. So I come off, I had a quick look on the pole. Tried to set the pole up and it didn't, it just weren't going to compete at all. Um, and yeah, just fish waggler front to back. Um, I could see down to my left, they were catching on the waggler and their fish seemed to be bigger than mine. Um, and the end three boats or the end two boats is where there's been epicenter for quite a while now. And it was, I mean, Dan Abbott had some cracking rud, like two pounders. You know, I'd, I'd won about a good pound and then maybe a few like in that 12 ounce bracket, but I had a lot of my fish were like four to six ounces, which normally they to me they're the ones you want because they're in a shoal whereas the two pounders don't tend to be in a big enough shoal if you know what i mean but they were mixed in with these as well and dave lee had a fantastic weight john means had a i mean i had 58 pound 10 oh. so weighing in so the match is finished and i'm like everyone's like what you got and i'm like i ain't got a scooby-doo what i've got i might have 30 pound i might have 45 50 pound and um Thinking, I've caught most of the day. I've had a little. My last hour weren't very good. I didn't didn't get that right the last hour. I um, literally the the bigger fish were as tight as you could chuck to this boat because they're sort of backing away yeah, all yeah, the time. Yeah. And um, got my waggler in, and there's a little vent with like three little holes, and my hook. Can you imagine a size twelve? Gone <laughs> size twelve. I never thought to say that. <laughs> has caught this vent, and I'm like, oh. So I'm like trying to flick it off, and it's not coming. It's not going off. And I was like, in the end, it's break my line where the waggler is i always have two setups but my other waggler rod weren't it weren't identical it was a lighter version and it wasn't quite right i couldn't get to where i wanted and because you're catching you you can't sort of set another one up so um i felt that 60 pound was definitely achievable if i'd have still had yeah yeah but you use a line clip on his on your reel yeah yeah but you sort you do but you sort of you're chucking Along the boat, yeah. if you know what I mean. Can you actually hit the boat with your float. Yeah, well, that's what I was doing. Right, yeah. So I hit the, I was hitting the boat and uh, it was going down, yeah, and the yeah. corn just has just gone like that on the oh. on this little vent. Yeah. And I was like, a couple of times I looked it early and it come off, and I was like, <laughs> but um, yeah, and that, I think that's cost me. I've yeah. been joining the sixty pound club because there's not many people in the sixty pound club at March, but I'm in the fifty pound club now. So you were first with fifty eight, fifty eight ten. Dave Lee swapped his emp for corn this week and he had 58.3. He had a cracking day. Um, Dan Abbott had 57.13. That's crazy, man. It mate. is, yeah. And John Means had 56, like 12 or something like oh, that. There were th four weights yeah. over 50. Yeah. Um, and he's had, Means has had two weights over 50 pounds this year out of March. 
Amazing. One a Roach and one a Rudd. I wonder, where the, I wonder where the Mullers are going to go on Wednesday. No, they won't go down there. That's a horrible walk. There's no way they're going to go down there. Well, we could see. <laughs> I'll, I'll bet you a, a tin of sweet corn. Two tins. Two tins. Yeah. They go down there. Yeah. Mate, well done. That's amazing. I mean, I didn't think, honestly, for I couldn't believe it. I could Because you could sort of see along, can't you? And yeah. I'm looking and I'm thinking, I'm catching all right, but they're catching the same speed, but they seem to be bigger than mine. And I thought, well, I've drawn, I thought I'd blown the, the individual, if you know what I mean. Um, we'll come to that in a minute. Yeah. How many fish are from just past the bypass yeah. to... The last boat. The railway bridge. Uh, what, all the way through town? It must be. It's biblical. colossal, isn't it? Absolutely. And the thing is, right, I mean, I was thinking about it today. It's changed as well. The river's changed yeah. consistently, yeah. like... When we fish it in October, November time, it's all roach. Everything's roach, nice stamp roach. You know, those red are all in the marina. They can't all They be are, mate, it's heaving. Really? Yeah. And I think because the gates are down, for some reason they've either come they out. They come out and, and can't get back stuck. in. They can't get back in. Yeah. And, it's um, just a freak at the minute. They'll, yeah. they'll disappear again, they'll go straight back in. Yeah. And then what happens is, I think also, when they spawn, I think some of them spawn in there. The big ones, I think, I'm sure they stay in there. But out in the sticks, there are some. There's so many rudd, mm. three or four miles yeah. out the sticks. Yeah. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. So I think the good thing about March is it's like evolves with the as, yeah. as the yeah. winter goes on. So it's incredible, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I mean, and you think we haven't had really them big skimmer weights this year? No. You know, with my predator hound, where are the pike? Because you're not getting any pike trouble. There's not as much <laughs> pike trouble now than there was in November. But there's never. Year. But. There's not much pike trouble. No, they never take a fish off your hook or anything. You guys are so good at activating uh, pegs, right? Yeah. So, like, if you have a match at Oundle, one of the yeah, yeah. it's well, mayhem. Uh... Do you see what I mean? Out here, it's nothing, mm. and that's because there's nothing. That's the worrying thing. It's like mm. you should be getting loads of pike trouble. Yeah. Because of all the fish that are there, it should be like... Yeah. It should send them into a feeding frenzy, and if they were there, that's what would happen. Yeah. And it's for me, it's like, wow. Mm. Oh, this is a bit... And the bottom line is, those pike were nailed years ago and taken for the pot, and mm. they've never, ever come back. No. Maybe <clears> that's <throat> the reason why the small fish are thriving. You don't know, do you? Well, the pike aren't going to smash into the willy-nilly. No, but it's when you guys activate the swim. You know, like perch and things, there's definitely a lot more perch. There's a change in the biomass yeah, of the predators, definitely. yeah. And there's more little xander as well. Yeah, yeah. lots more xander. Yeah. A lot more xander. Which is interesting in itself, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Yeah. Right, mate, what were the scores on the doors? With scores the on the doors. So, obviously, we did the top four in my section, which was top four, funnily enough, in the match with those weights. Uh, last in my section was £27 pound <laughs> in 11 peg section. Wow. Yeah, so pretty good. Um, teams on the day, Dio Tackle and Bates, 19. Stan J Gold, 22. Peterborough Pink, or should I say Asda, Audi, Lidl. <laughs> Anyone who likes to sponsor them uh, with 31. Mark 1, White 34, tied with uh, Stanjay Silver. So that was teams on the day. So overall league, Dara Tackle and Bates pissed it with six points. <laughs> Mark 1, White. So well done, Mark 1, White with 11. Peterborough Pink 14 and then Stanjay Gold 17. So that's your top four over the four. Matches. Where were March tackling mates? Uh, we were third go going into the th this round, but um, I think we ended up fifth with about 19 points. Cause right. I think we was last yesterday. So, um, is that your phone? Yeah, it's constant. Um, the shake is in is in demand. Yeah, sun in it. Is it um, Jolly Green Giant? They want to sponsor. Well, you. to be fair, Sweet Corn has just gone up. I tell you what. Peter yeah. probably jealous, won't you? If you get if you get oh, the green jewel, yeah, that's on not on their shirt, is it? No. To be fair, I used um, the census yellow corn. It's pretty good. Do you sell it in the shop? Yeah. Oh, funny funny. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. Is it available online? Uh, no, only in store. Uh, only in store. <laughs> yeah. So um, that was that. Um, individual wise. Um, they always have a trophy for the top individual. Thank you. Um, we are not worthy. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> and um, third was, I'm sure third was Steve Goodrum. Um, he was second at one point. He was. But Mark Pollard sneaked in second with another section win. Did he? Yes. 
Yeah, consider he's, you know... He's a bit ninja, that one. Yeah, he's he? just... Yeah. <laughs> sneaked in there, threw out through everyone's legs. Um, so he had, I think, Polly had, like, ten points, which is great, because they're big sections. Yeah. And um, I obviously drew bungholes all series. Bunghole baits. Bunghole baits, and I had the perfect four points. So I might do a video now, do you know what I mean? How prestigious... Are you and Steve Winters, like, sponsored yeah. by the same team? Yeah, yeah. 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 Might, might do a Steve Winters and... Do what? Should, should, should do a video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sponsored yeah. by um, as the veg section or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh mate, that's good. You got it. Come on, show everybody a trophy. Oh well, yeah. I've got a, I've got a nice um, obviously Stan Edges trophies. Nice little plaque which could go on the the table of relevance if we've got space. Um, but obviously the team winning was was obviously the main thing. Um, so well done, lads. Um. Well, it's another success for your boys, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, now yeah. Were, yeah. And um, they've got a nice little trophy. Um, it's got all the names of previous winners, and I forgot I'd actually won it all bef before, in 2012. Oh, this one? Yeah. One, Did you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, get that away before you shout at me. Uh, yeah, so I've won it twice now. Oh, well done. Yeah. Yeah. You need to... Um... Mate, have you ever thought of going a bit further afield? What? No, no, I, I'm too busy. I'm too busy. <laughs> yeah, I'm all right in the swamp, but uh, yeah. <laughs> in the swamp. Oh, well done, mate. That's a three. Does that make up a little bit for last week? And no, no, no. That no. scarred you, has it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mental yeah. scarred you. Yeah. yeah, and then you just made it worse by inviting every Tom, Dick, and Harry <laughs> to take the piss even more, didn't you? <laughs> hey, it just. The stars aligned. It just happened to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just happened to be that week. It was just that's all. That's the only time I get everyone together. So uh, uh, as you can probably tell bad. from our lads, I've had quite a lot of stick, like good banter from everyone. And are you going to Bennett this week, Alex? I was like, yeah, to do the draw. That's it. Yeah, just little bits and pieces. I mean, that's what it's all about, isn't it? I mean, I'm going to mention one thing. We've got the perch here because we're about to do a one-off lure fishing podcast yeah. special. It's a huge furore at the minute with some. Alleged cheating and an online competition that it's is far more than this. Mm. And the lure fishing scene at the minute is not very good, it's a bit toxic. The match fishing scene is just great because of the banter. Oh, yeah. It's because it's bigger. People take themselves, they're not so protective mm. and a bit insular. They're a bit more up for giving it out, taking it. Yeah. And I think it's really buoyant, man. I just, this season, season five of doing this has been great fun, isn't it? It has, I mean, yeah. Just all this is yeah, just yeah. brilliant. And um, it's just no one takes no one's too no one's precious. Mm -hmm. They give a bit, of, and when they get it back, they just go lap it up. Yeah, because you know you can give it back to them. Yeah, and it's and that's it's about having a hobby that is a sport that we take seriously, but having a lot of fun yeah. whilst we're doing it is good. Before um, before we go, we have we're definitely doing the litter pick on April the seventh. Yeah. So we've probably got two, three, maybe four more podcasts, which depends yeah, what content like, we got. Yeah. We're definitely going to another, do another two. Mm -hmm. um, we've got somebody lined up who we're going to ask to come on, which we don't even know if he's going to do it yet. But yeah. If he does, that'd be really cool. So we, we've definitely got two, probably three, maybe four. But keep I'll keep banging the drum about April the 7th. So we'll give out more information about doing the litter pick out here on the old course of the Neen. Uh, you match anglers that have fished the venue this winter. It'd be great to see one or two of you putting a little bit back in. Mm. Because I think it's... Even though... We know match anglers, most match anglers are not responsible for any of the litter. Mm -hmm. It's a good PR stunt, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Um, I know Tony Jakes and Whittlesey are going to do one as well yeah. on the same time. And I know Kingsley are going to do something but a little bit later on, so that'd be really cool. Mate, congratulations again. That was really good, winning AJ Individual. Mm. And what a cracking way. You must be, yeah. be like buzzing. Yeah. I'm always buzzing. Look at him smiling. <laughs> Right, is there anything else you want to add? No, I think, oh, well. Oh, chip, 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 chip shop. Chip shop, we went for the chip yeah. shop. Yeah. There's quite a few chip shopping. I mean, poor old Slate's filled in for us, and um, I think he had a, a proper royal Harry Ramsden this week. He's had 43 one side and 57 the other. Did he have not any sweet corn? I don't know. I, I think he did, but he still had a mega day. Did have sensors, did he? Um, 80 Stokes, obviously. Well, wow. got battered both sides. 46 56 pound one side and 36 pound the other. What did he have? I'm gonna say he had 30 pound, but a low 30. Yeah, um, that's to be expected. But it's got to be Bob Nudd again. <laughs> 
It's got to be Bob Ned again. Sir Bob, <laughs> you're avoiding me. So there's there's two T-shirts for you. Maybe we can do one back-to-back. So I can have one with Sonu on and one with Preston, Preston you know, yeah, yeah. and one with Van Den Eyne. We could have Browning crossed out. He'd have more, he's got more more sponsors than Pete, right? Oh, he? he has. I was thinking yeah. that the other day. So, um, Bob, come on. Come on the podcast. Yeah, that'd be great. With the T-shirt on. Well, I don't know about that one, but <laughs> I think you're, you're hoping a bit there. I think you're hoping to get him on, but... Oh, we'd like to get him on. That'd be great. We, I, I think it'd yeah. be great, yeah. Let's see if he, if he can, if he can fit us in. That'd be awesome. I mean, he has been using my Wi-Fi code yeah. all season, so it's only fair. So you're going to give it to Bob? What, just out of interest, how, what was caught either side of him? Um, £23 and £21, I think. And what did he amass? £19. Oh, well, yeah. Um... There was a few chip shop awards. I have, to be honest, I've probably missed some other really good ones, but I um I haven't really studied the results. The analyst Barker will be in. He's on holiday this week, so is he? Yeah, and he didn't get chip shop, so I don't think he cares. But um, yeah. yeah. Right, mate. This this is this is probably a two-hour special. Yeah, yeah. Hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah. See you all next week. Yeah.